coverage continues from the NFL Draft Combine. We're joined by the new head man in Jacksonville, Doug Peterson, joining us here on set. Doug, we appreciate the time. How is that assimilation process going for you? Fast and furious right now. You know, it's been about three and a half weeks mm -hmm. and, um, you know, assembling a staff and then trying to evaluate your current roster. And then you got, you know, the, the, the combine now here and you're trying to evaluate these guys. So it's been been fast and furious on top of trying to, you know, put in our own offense and defensive schemes. But uh, I'm excited for it. Looking forward to getting with these players uh, come early April. I'm going to go ahead and get the first Pete Prisco question out of the way. I know that when you took this job over, you knew that there would be some fixing involved with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why was this a job that was worth taking on, that is worth fixing for you? You know, you, you look around sports and, and, and you follow different teams. And, and you know, th this team, when I looked at this team and I evaluated this roster during my time away, especially that last month and kind of during the interview uh, process, this team's not that far off, quite honestly. That, I, I believe that in my heart of hearts. Now, are we there? No, we're not there. We still need... You know, we still need some, some draft picks. We, we still need some free agents. We've got some holes to, to fill, but, but the talent's there. And I'm excited about the young quarterback and, and working with Trevor and, and uh, you know, some of the young talent on this roster. That's what drew me to Jacksonville, and I think that's, you know, uh, why, why we're here today. And so I'm, I'm excited about that and looking forward to working with these guys. You mentioned Trevor. Um, his rookie year was kind of a little unsettled, but there's a moments, particularly the Colts game, where you saw what he's capable of. In sitting down and evaluating him so far, what is your assessment of him? I mean, again, he's one of the young, talented players on this on this roster, and someone you can really build a future with. And um, there were a lot of moments last year where that came through, and he shined that way and really led this football team. You know, I've, I've only had a chance to meet him briefly here in the last three or four weeks, but what everybody has told me within the building is he's a tremendous leader. He's the first in, the last out every single day on and off the football field and that's what you want from the face of your franchise right from from your from your uh, your, your quarterback and and we know that we've got work to do he knows he's got work to do and and looking forward to that we're not going to shy away from it and we're going to we're going to build from there coach one of the words that continually came up in your introductory press conference was culture what is step one in changing the air in the room like you have to do in jacksonville i think you come in and you show people who you are and, and you just be be Doug Peterson. Don't be the guy you just had on set, on set Andy Reid. I mean, even though I worked for him, <laughs> coached for, or coached mm -hmm. with him, played for him, you know. And that's that's the thing that you you try to do in this profession is. And I got a lot of respect and owe a lot to, to that man. But at the same time, I want organizations you know, like like Philly did and now Jacksonville to see me and see who I am and what I can bring and, you know talking with the business side and, and, and Mark Lamping, the president, and really start building those relationships. And, and, and I'm here to, to serve them as well, you know, because when we win on the football field, the entire organization wins, and that's how you begin to change culture. How's that offensive line looking? Because I know you guys had tagged Cam Robinson, drafted Walker Little last year, obviously before you got there. You have a decision coming up on guard Andrew Norwell. Uh, you talk about Trevor Lawrence, right? Uh, well, number one up front and, and what that is. So what's the plan there? Well, the plan is to continue to evaluate, and the plan is to, to really dive into to our own free agents. You mentioned a few of them, obviously the free agents that are out there in the NFL, and then this draft process. And so we know that we have to, you know, we got some pieces that we got to, you know, we, we got to shore up in the offensive line because if you can't run the ball and you can't throw the ball, you're not going to win many games in the NFL. And, and um, you know, we also know that, that, that if we can re-sign some of the UFAs that we already have, that goes a long way with sort of solidifying that offensive line. We just signed a piece the other day in, in Shatley. So mm -hmm. that, that part is that part is coming. Um, it's a big piece, you know, obviously to, to the success that we're going to have on offense and, and, uh, and keeping Trevor healthy. There's a lot of criticism of Trent Baalke in Jacksonville. The fans were just irate that he's staying. There was talk of people not taking the job because of him, and yet you came. How was your relationship with Trent? It's been great. And, and, and then quite honestly, I don't worry about the past. For me, it's about the future and looking forward and, and building my relationship with Trent. I really didn't know him prior to, you know, coming to Jacksonville and through this interview process. And so I'm always about being forward thinking and, and really let me let me start working with, with, with Trent and let, let he and I get together and, and start formulating our own, you know, relationship and, and friendship and bond as we go throughout this whole process. And and I'm excited about that, you know, and, and um, 
It's been very open. It's been very honest and transparent. And, you know, we continue that way. I think good things are, you know, in the future. Doug, your position of expertise, obviously, quarterback, when you watch Trevor Lawrence, and maybe you watched every single snap of the Jacks. Did you? Do you want to sit up here and say that you watched every single snap? I didn't have to watch every snap, no. <laughs> <laughs> but what is, the, what is the number one thing that you want him to improve on this offseason? You know, and that's an interesting question because – we're, we're sort of erasing last year. I want him to learn from it. You know, he played in every game, mm -hmm. right? Um, but but we're, we're taking him from the ground floor. We're, we're kind of treating this like his, like his rookie season. Really? Even though, even though he's got, you know, games under his belt, we're starting over. And, and really, um, we can lean on some of the successes that he had. But at the same time, we're going to formulate our own plan. And, and, and with Trevor and with his input, and, and really attacking this offseason that way and building him from the floor and the ground up. Um, but everything so far that, you know, the conversations I've had with him, he's ready and eager to get in there to, 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 to really start breaking it down so we can start building it back up. How do you – one thing that stood out last year with the team was they weren't very fast. How do you get faster? You get fast players. And, and how are you going to do that? Free agency, <laughs> I mean, the draft? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, both. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you know, there, there, there's obviously some skilled guys that have speed, um, you know, and, and uh, do your offensive linemen need to be fast? No. I mean, they need to be quick. They yeah. need to be, mm -hmm. you know, got to be able to get to second level and be able to pull around the edge and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, your skill positions need to be fast. And there are, there are some talented guys, you know, obviously uh, in free agency. There's also some talented guys in this draft that they can help that issue, you know, and, 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 you know, once we get them, we got to keep them and make them ours. You know, it's not every day you get the mayor of Jacksonville and the head coach of the football team on oh, one well. set. So we're thankful that you stopped by, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks. So taking a look at number one picks in back-to-back -back years, uh, it's happened before. Not too common. The Jags will have it. Last year taking Trevor Lawrence, number one overall. Of course, this year still to be determined. The last team to do it was the Browns back in 2017 and 2018. They also did it in 99 and 2000. But 2017, 2018 taking Miles Garrett and then Baker Mayfield. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.